<clears throat> Good morning, everybody. Sites. Um, well, we heard just a moment ago about this carpet, you know, that could become a house, a house that can actually help you in terms of healthcare. And I'll, I'll try to talk about a city, what we call a sensible city. So a city can actually be responsive to you. And this is what we're doing at the Sensible City Lab at MIT, part of the School of Architecture and Planning. And, uh, you know, if you think about uh, the 1990s, think about 1993 is when Mosaic first appeared, the first browser. People were very, very excited about the internet, uh, very, very excited about everything virtual and thinking that uh, this is what would be very important and not the physical side of things. And uh, because of this, actually, uh, some people thought that uh, um, the death uh, of distance brought by the nets uh, will also mean the death of space. So Gilder 1995, cities are leftover baggage from the industrial time. Um, you know, it's a tough job to be a futurologist, especially if people look back at what you wrote 15 years ago. And we all know the story now, 2008. This is the year that, for the first time, half of the world's population lives in city. And uh, this is an image from Tianjin, where we had the forum in September. And, uh, uh, you know, cities, China itself, planning to build more cities than humanity ever built. So what happened in the meanwhile is that uh, the digital didn't really kill the city, so the digital layer, but the digital and the physical are creating a new condition for actually for monitoring, for making our cities more alive and responsive to ourselves, also in terms of healthcare. And then I'll show you here just something a bit unrelated, but uh, it's the first time, this is something we did in the group, it was the first time ever that we took a big city and monitored it using all the signal from cell phones, all anonymized. Um, and this is a special day, it's a day that Italy won the World Cup, and this is the city of Rome. You see the cell phone in activity intensity in red. That's before the match. Um, this is the Colosseum, city of Rome, the river. Um, the city becomes like alive. And then see, match begins, silence. Actually, nobody talks anymore. <laughs> Italy scores half time. So half time, you, you have a quick chat and you, you go to the bathroom. And then uh, end of normal time, first overtime, second overtime, you might recall Zidane, red car, Italy wins. <laughs> And then, uh, and then uh, uh, you know, people went to celebrate in this part of town. And then the following day, they went to meet with the prime minister and the winning team over here. And then they moved back here to celebrate. And you'll see it in all this signature. So our space, our built environment is becoming alive through all these sensors. I will skip to it. We can go to the next slide. Uh, so I'll tell you now about the project we're doing for Copenhagen in 2009. In December, we have, uh, there's a UN climate summit in the city that's uh, on the way to uh, re-sign the Kyoto Protocol. Uh, and so the mayor of the city came to us and uh, said, how can we use technology to make the city more responsive and uh, more sustainable? And Copenhagen is interesting because 30 years ago, nobody was driving bikes. But if you go there today, you see something like this. And 30% of all trips every day is uh, by bike. So what we said, how can you use the bike, something that everybody has in Copenhagen, to change the experience, to monitor your health, and to promote more biking? So what we're doing now is actually designed, together with uh, Smart Cities Group at the Media Lab, a, it's a smart wheel, so the bike is still the same. You just change the wheel, it fits into any bike, and the wheel has two or three new things. Um, one, it uh, harvests energy when you brake, so it has a regenerative braking system. And then with the energy you have, you can use it to go uphill, to start, and also to have sensors inside for air quality, for position, and for the torque that you're applying. So that's like packing a Prius, a Toyota Prius, into your wheel, but it's not much weight. Uh, you got some batteries, the engine inside, and all of that packed in a self-contained wheel. And uh, with this, you can do a number of things. The first one is in terms of behavior change, you can promote even more biking. So, um, you know, we are suggesting to the city to do like a frequent flyer scheme for bicycle, green miles. You get a frequent flyer statement, you're very happy for the gadgets, but it's a lot of CO2 emitted. But then here you can actually monitor your green miles uh, and uh, see how that's changing. You can measure the exposure to toxic agents in the city. So your air quality monitoring is like when you put a something in your skin and you see the exposure to the sun. So you can do it with the air quality. And this is for you so you can see individually this information, but you can also collect it and then share it and get it at a city scale. So the city is actually planning to develop 3,000 bikes. If every bike has a sensing system, and if you create a very simple 
network, it's called a mesh network that the signal jumps from one bike to the other bike, then you can collect all this information and have a wonderful air quality monitoring system in the city. And then of course you get all your personal data so you can, of course you can see how many miles you've been traveling but by measuring the torque, the city can also get you a sense of uh, how well you're doing, fit fitness monitoring. So, uh, you know, this morning you might say, you might tell you the bike, might tell you, hey, I see your torque is not so good this morning, so is anything wrong? Uh, you, get a, you get a constant monitoring on that. And that's the first prototype at MIT, quick video. Um, first iteration, you'll see it in a moment. One of the students worked on this. Um, in, in the end, there's only a Wi-Fi controller for the wheel, so nothing else, you just change the wheel, you can retrofit it to any bike. <coughs> and that's it. So how really our daily objects, our city, our built environment can become a way to monitor, I mean, become more responsive, it also help us monitor our health. That's it, thank you.